I haven't done a YouTube video in a while. I was actually, I did this earlier on Instagram Live, but I wanted to put something on YouTube because it's just been so long. Uh, I definitely, like, I have more followers on Instagram, but I, I just like YouTube better. reasons. Uh, so, like I said, did this earlier. Now I'm going to do the nunchucks. I wasn't sure if I was going to do those or not, but I just can't help myself. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to first take my kneaded eraser. Oh, and let me get uh, some of the info in here. So let's figure a good way to put all this stuff. Here's all the info for what, uh, what materials I'm using. And this is for uh, the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. It'll be auctioned as part of San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, keep, I keep those materials lists now right on my my desktop because people always ask and I'm always happy to share but it is easier to just put it out front rather than answer the questions individually because you know I have the same questions whenever I'm watching a video like this so um, it's just nice to have it in one spot easy to read for people and you know in case you are just dropping in and didn't hear the question answered. Uh, so I'm gonna finish this off just the same way that I did the head. I'll start off with the Pentel pocket brush pen. If I can find it, there it is. Um, I got the special pink version, because I'm fancy. And uh, you know, now that, I, now that I look at it, I might actually try a different pen, but I'll go ahead and do the hands, or the, the claws, whatever you wanna call them. They'll, they'll look better with a more organic look. I was actually just looking to see if I could find any of these, um, like a toy, a one-six scale toy. And they do make something, but it, it's... I'm not, I'm not crazy about the, the sculpt on it. And uh, the, also the size is off. I, I collect one six scale weapons and accessories uh, just you know for no other purpose than to make me happy um, and it's it's cheaper than buying the full figures uh, but they have one that is a little bit too big for one six scale I don't know why but it's a simple enough construction that I think I could I could build it myself, but of course I'll never have the time to do that. So I gotta figure out another way. It's much easier to buy things. Scoop things up a little bit so you can see. Uh, I wish I had a simple trick. You know what? I might I might switch I might switch my pen. Um, I don't often use this, but when I when it comes in handy, it's perfect. Uh, it's the ah oh god I don't know how to say it mangaka mangaka flexible uh, zig cartoonist. <laughs> There's like. There's so many names on it, I don't know what to call it. But the important thing is, I don't know if you can really read it there, water-based pigment. Um, does it say it's waterproof? The main thing is you want it to be waterproof. 
And the only way to do that is to try it on some paper and then put some water over it. So I do this with all my pens. I'll do that and then I will let it dry. I'll set that aside and then I'll double check it because I, I do have some that are not waterproof and I have to make sure that this is not one of them. And I, I don't use them often enough where I just know offhand. I try, I try to buy ones that are only waterproof because uh, water resistant doesn't really cut it most of the time. And the reason I, I do that, of course, is because I like watercolor on top of my inks. So it is best for all involved if the ink will hold up to it. Now, I do have some that are not, uh, just because I liked the feel of them. But I eventually found some that were pretty much the same, but were waterproof. So I've kind of stopped using the other ones. And that one was, I think, the was by Kuratake. This one. And I put a red piece of red tape on it uh, so that I remember it. it's not, it is not waterproof. But I, I have another one now. Um, I think it's made by the same company, but it's a little more waterproof. So anyway, now that I tried that, I'm going to get this back over and see if I can watercolor it. Yep, holds up. So we are good to go. Just wanted to double check on that. And once again, that's Mangaka um, Zig by Zig Cartoonist. And I like these because they're just, um, you know, it's a pen, but it's a felt tip. So it's somewhat flexible and I can go, you know, it doesn't go super thin, but that's not what I want it for. Uh, but what I do like about it, what, what, for me, the main advantage of using a pen is that it can go in any direction. With a brush, I usually have to kind of attack the art from a certain direction in order for the brush to behave. And I think that's what actually turns most people off from uh, using brushes. Now, I've always been pretty comfortable with them, but it's just because I've, I've been using them for so long. And I can definitely see how it can be intimidating to people who just aren't used to it or never tried it before. Um, but I, you know, I still recommend um, at least trying a brush uh, because they're just so versatile. Now again, uh, I wish I had uh, some tips or tricks about drawing chains, but you just got to draw it. You just got to go in and draw every single link. And uh, I like I like doing um, cast shadow on the chains, no matter no matter what like material they're supposed to be. If like as opposed. I, you know, if they're supposed to be chrome and shiny, like it wouldn't necessarily do this, but uh, it's just such an effective way to get the three dimensionality. And the angle and the relationships, just, you know, to make it look more chain like. It's just a very effective way to do that quickly without a whole lot of work. Because uh, chains can, they can, they can be a little tough, and they can kind of, well, they they can suck up your time. And if that's not kind of what your image is about, then it can, it can take away from other things, other subject matter. Some people complain about 
having to draw the webs on on Spidey, but for me, it's that doesn't bother me. It's it's chains. Now it you know, like city buildings, I'm always happy once it's done. But uh, while I'm in the thick of it, it's you know, it's not the most engaging work. But for stuff like this, I'll, you know, obviously I can still talk. Um, if I weren't live streaming, I'd probably be listening to an audio book or something like that. Now, I'm probably going to grunge these up a little bit. Because, you know, I think of them as being pretty worn. You don't need much. Uh, with That's the nice thing about ink, is like a few carefully placed dots and dashes will make the whole thing look grungy. So that's just a whole lot faster when I'm using the, the pen. And I, I think we're done with the chain, at least. I can quit complaining. Um, so now I'm going to do some lines. Um, that's, I'll, I'll probably use the pen for that as well. Get that out of there. This is um, an Alvin drafting ruler. See if we can get this to focus. It's having a tough time. Um, you know, classic drafting material. It's just kind of like a parallel ruler. Um, that's what the rollers are for. I don't use those all the time. Uh, I just I like the ruler in general. dry for a second. Maybe while it's drying, I'll do the other hand. And then, uh, if you didn't see earlier, this is on uh, Stratmore 500 series mixed media board, uh, which is kind of the same as their illustration board. It's just, it's real thick. You know, it's, you can barely bend it. Um, and it's just great for holding up to watercolor or gouache or, you know, acrylic, basically anything. Um, you know, if you were doing oils, it could, but you'd have to prime it first. Um, but yeah, it's just a good all around board. And uh, the main reason I like it is because with my printer, uh, it's an Epson P400, which is, they no longer make, but I'm sure they have something similar to it. Uh, you can actually put the thick board through the printer. Um, it can't go through the main feeder. It has to go through the back. Or kind of, it, no, I think it's the front feeder. It, go, it goes back and forth. But anyway, the point is the thick board can go through. And so that allows me to do most of my prep work, most of my drawing in Photoshop, in the computer, and then print it out and paint over it or ink over it or whatever it is I need to do. Because I, at this point, like I'm just so used to drawing in the computer, and having all my reference, you know, right there for me. Um, it's become sort of a crutch, but it is a good crutch to have, I think. Yeah. 
I, I really want to, I really want to sculpt one of these for myself. A little pair of panthro nunchucks. You know, I, I had, I had the, the panthro uh, toy when I was young. He was always my favorite. I mean, I, I loved, I loved all of them. I loved Lionel. And I think everybody but Tigra. <laughs> I never liked Tigra, but uh, he's fine. He's a good, good member of the team. Yeah, in high school, I did like a, a full on Thundercats illustration and like uh, colored in alcohol markers. And I, I think I did a bad job with Tigra. I mean, the whole thing doesn't look, doesn't look great, but it, you know, it was passable for being, uh, I think I was 17 or 18. I think it was the summer before um, my senior year. I, you know, at, at a time when I was trying to get a little, a little bit more serious about uh, comics and making a go as a professional. Obviously, I had a lot of a lot more to do. But uh, you always you gotta start somewhere. All right, that's it for the pen. Now I'll use the pocket brush. The, these are going to be more chrome, so I'll throw in some like. Reflections. Again, you know, with ink, it doesn't take much to give give you that idea, that sense of a different material or a different texture. Now, I'll leave these kind of undone so that I can do most of the uh, texture work with the watercolor, but I do want to have some dots and dashes to show you that he is no stranger to action. <laughs> Such a nerd. And I love it. Nicks and cuts and bruises and dents. That'll be enough. And you know what? I want to do a nice drop shadow. Really make that come out. Ah, nothing like a good drop shadow. All right. Can I make that thicker? Uh, slightly. Okay. So I'll let that uh, kind of dry for a second. I'll take a look at the comments. Uh, oh, uh, JW, thanks. I'm glad you like the 45 degree uh, vanishing point. Uh, I think about that thing way more than I should, but it really is. It's it's kind of key, and I keep you know I have my own kind of perspective tool slash grid that I created in Photoshop, and I you know I, I've been saying I'm going to share it with the world for about 10 years. And I still haven't done it. But that being said, I have made it even better uh, as of late with the, the work I've been doing for Marvel Studios just because I have to do so much perspective work. And um, I really should just start sharing it. Uh, you like the Tombow brush pens? Yeah, yeah, those are great too. I can't remember if they are waterproof or not. There's something about them I didn't like and that might, might have been it. Oh, hi, Orchid, <laughs> Orchid Voodoo. Uh, nice, glad to hear it. Yeah, those ones, um, you know, those were done pretty early on in my career, but I, I was pretty happy with them, and I, I still, uh, I don't hate them, which is always good for something you did almost 20 years ago. 
I, I did the first one in 2000, definitely in 2004. Uh, I may have started on the first in two, 2003. Can't remember exactly. No, uh, no, it was probably, yeah, summer of 2004, I think. Yeah, because I, I finished up the last one right before I went to San Diego Comic Con, uh, which I think that was my very first San Diego. Uh, and that's that's actually, that's roughly when I started working with uh, Mark Hay of Splash Page Comic Art. Uh, who's been selling my work now for, again, almost 20 years. Uh, this month, actually, no, last month uh, was 20 years for me since I started at Marvel, which is unbelievable. Uh, you know, so much has, has happened <laughs> since then. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've, I've had a just amazing career in terms of opportunities and everything. Um, you know, if you if you had told me when I was in high school that this is what I'd be doing, you know, I'd be like, I'd just be beside myself. All right, I think we're gonna do red in front, and the um, so I've got on him. I have light coming from up here, uh, top left, our left, and uh, so I'm gonna kind of keep to that. That's why I did the drop shadow there, and so that would put the reflection right about, you know, more towards the top. Whereas on the blue one, that'll be uh, more towards the center because the light is hitting it dead on. You know, and that's why I, I keep a lot of these like one six scale props at my desk because I use them all the time uh, just for lighting information, sometimes for inspiration, for drawing to get, you know, 3D likeness. I just bought a whole bunch of new ones uh, that are really great. I get them off eBay. Here's a nice George Clooney. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's so well sculpted. It just boggles my mind. Um, you know, I've I've done I've done heads before, but they're just never at this level. Uh, I like to think that I could if I really tried, really practiced, but. At the same time, I'm just kind of in, in awe of what these sculptors can do. I follow a lot of them on Instagram. Um, and so I, I, I hate to say it, but I think, I think these are probably bootleg. I get them from China, but I don't know where, like, I don't know what this, um, I think it's Goldfinger from the original Bond. Uh, but just such great faces. And I, I get tired of um, I get tired of drawing my own face. Uh, you know, it it's fine to use yourself as reference, and I do always have because uh, I'm always there. Uh, but it's just you know I'm getting to the point where I, I need some other faces that aren't mine. All right, so. I'm going to do kind of like a white um, specular highlight on these. I don't have like perfect reference for it. So when I think about that, um, I try to think of the, the object in my mind in three dimensions, which of course is, you know, easier said than done, but it does help. And so what I'll actually do, the, the way to figure out a reflection is to choose a plane and it could be, you know, in any direction facing anywhere. But in this case, I'm choosing like a plane. If you think of the, uh, if you think of the top of this pin, I'm choosing this direction right here. So anything along this entire nunchuck that where the plane faces this way should get a white highlight. And, you know, it's not exact, but if you are consistent, then it'll just, it'll at least give you the impression of it being correct. 
And, it, you know, it's funny, like, sometimes I'll do a 3D model in, like, ZBrush or Blender, and it actually, it'll give me something that's accurate in terms of specular reflections, but I won't like the result. I'll, I'll like, I, I much rather prefer the one that is not technically correct, uh, but looks good, as opposed to the one that is correct, but doesn't. So, I kind of go with my gut when it comes to that kind of stuff. But still, you know, I, I do my best to kind of think about where it'll go. Yeah, I remember uh, one time I was, I was on like a family vacation, but I had some work to do. We were hanging out with friends and so I was like painting a Black Panther cover and they, somebody saw me and like my hand is like this and like, I'm just literally trying to imagine like where the plane would be for, you know, I, you know, I was probably painting Black Panther like him on the cover at the time. And they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I, I did look pretty weird. I didn't realize anyone was watching. But if you ever see me with my hand like that, that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to figure out. All right. So That's good. I kind of, there's more I want to do, but I want to figure out the blue one first. Because the, um, for me, the, the highlights are what takes the most brain power. So I kind of want to get it over with, figure it out, and then I can kind of go to town. So on this one, you know, same plane direction, but it's hitting, it's hitting everybody in a, every surface at a different place. Um, and of course you can do the same thing with shadows. Um, shadows are a little bit easier, I think, unless you start talking about cast shadows and that's when things get a little more difficult. And again, that's why it's a good reason to keep around some props. I'm, you know, I'm always buying new like one six scale props. I uh, have a one six scale cape for Batman and I'm, I'm actually about to get another one because uh, I got to do a, a Batman cover. Uh, hopefully a series of Batman covers um, where I'll, I'll need, <laughs> I'll have a really good excuse to buy a cape, a one six scale one, but I want to get a, uh, a really nice one. There's a couple, a couple people I found on YouTube, uh, like Unreal Customs and there's one other one, oh, Valhalla. Um, customs, you know, these, these people that all they do, well, I don't know if it's all they do, but what I know them for is their work on uh, custom one six scale figures. Cause you know, you've got the, the hot toys market, but then, uh, they kind of add to that by making even nicer accessories like capes and, and whatnot. And I, I, I think unreal, like I think they actually do sculpting as well, um, just from what I've seen. But they, I think they play kind of coy on online. Like there's not, they don't advertise maybe because they don't have to. I don't know. Too much speculation on my part. <clears throat> Pardon me, I need some water. But uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Always, always nice having an audience. And I, I do miss going to conventions. Uh, I have no idea when I'll ever do it again. Kids got to be older. Um, I've got to be less tired. It's just, you know... If it were just me showing up, 
saying hi, then I, I think I could do it. But there's just so much prep work, and um, it, it usually it sets me back pretty significantly. Uh, with work and, and everything, so. So this, this light, this highlight will go from white to more of just a straight up uh, blue, this is, you know, phthalo blue. Whereas this this highlight will main, maintain consistency all the way across. All right, so I have those picked out. Now I'll go in and, well, let's do the chain. I'll use just some black. Darken that, darken that, and that. I don't, I don't think I'll do any like highlights on the chains. I'll just have, you know, like kind of a dirty, well-worn chain. Especially because the, the ink is already doing so much work in terms of form. Whereas the, yeah, the actual the nunchuck I wanted to, I wanted the highlight to do the work, you know, to, to alert the viewer as to the form and whatnot. Whereas the chain, you know, it has color on it, but it's, it's really not, it's not about the color. But that red and blue, I want it to really pop, you know. darken the one where it goes under and behind. Yeah. Darken that. Darken that. It's just kind of fun to push and pull them back in space. That's all painting is. Just trying to figure out how to make things pop. Sometimes you can do it with color. Sometimes you can do it with value. Sometimes you can do it with just simply placement. That's actually, you know, probably the easiest. Right, and then we'll go in and do some shadows, and we'll, then we'll be done. So I use a little bit of Payne's gray. This is my palette, in case you didn't see. It's a little Holbein, uh, nice palette. So I take my Payne's gray and just kind of strengthen that. Uh, Strengthen that highlight. Oh man, doing this really makes me want to make a pair of one six scale. <laughs> Check. I would make these before I did a sword of almonds. Yep, that looks decent. And then I'll do kind of a shadow indication underneath the claws. Again, using Payne's gray. And this will be all the, the downward facing planes. This is actually where it comes in handy to do um, 3D rendering, just to, just to learn a little bit about it. You know, build, find some, you know, YouTube uh, tutorial 
Um, you can use Blender, which is free, and it's a great program. I'm actually in the, in the midst of kind of learning it again. I never got good at it, and I want to get better. You know, I'll, I'll never, I'll never like be a professional at it, but it's just such a quick way to get what I need. Kind of dirty it up a little bit. It's too clean there. All right, and now the red one. Well, I'll have to figure out my shadow color. My shadow color is probably going to be a lizarin and Payne's Gray together, and then maybe a little bit of permanent red to give it a little more opacity. Because uh, a lizarin has, like, no, no opacity at all. So sometimes I'll just take a thicker red, like permanent red, just to give the alizarin some body. It actually, you know, it ends up in a really nice hue. Um, it's like one of my favorite colors. It's like right in between. <laughs> it's like right in between cadmium red and uh, alizarin. And it's actually, it's like the mixture of the two. Like not, not quite fully mixed, which gives it that kind of scintillating effect where it's not just one color it's like it's two reds combined but not fully mixed i might just give it the just the slightest wash over the white using a very orange, orangish red. That's too much. There we go. Yeah, as, as I've mentioned before, my trick with red is to actually use orange. If you want something to really pop, um, you know, control the situation around it, and then where you, where you want the bright red to be, you just put orange. Full saturation orange. All right, I think. I think that pretty much does it. Might do a couple more tidbits here and there, but I, I need to get in close and you guys don't need to see my big old nose in the frame. Might do some more dark in there too, but I think it's pretty much done. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Uh, if you want to see the first part of this, uh, where I, I do the head, that's going to be on Instagram. Uh, same handle, Paulo M. Rivera, at Paulo M. Rivera. And, um, you know, this will be up if you want to watch it again. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, let me see. Any questions before I go? Um, how long do I let the ink dry before applying watercolor? It's not very long at all. Uh, you know, sometimes just two minutes. And that's like to play it safe. So if, if you're having problems and, uh, you know, where it's still smudging, I don't think it's the time, it's probably the ink. So be sure you're using waterproof ink. I recommend uh, one of these, Pentel Pocket Brush. Um, let, me sh let me show you the most important thing. Don't use this one. <laughs> so this is the Pentel Art Brush. And this, like, why they did it this way, it's so confusing, but the Pentel Art Brush is not waterproof, so don't ever use the, this if you're going to uh, watercolor on top of it. It's a fine brush, it works great, it's a little bigger than the pocket brush, but it's terrible if you want to put water over it. What you want is the, I don't think I have it anymore, 
It looks exactly the same, but instead of a black body, it is a gray body, but it is black ink. Again, so confusing. I don't know why they do it. It's just how it is. Make sure it is waterproof and you won't have any problems. But always, 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 no matter what you do, test it first. You'll notice I even did it here before we started today. Test it on this first. Put water on top. If it runs, don't use it. Anything else? Uh, Batman covers? Yes, I'm so excited. Um, will I be doing conventions again? Probably not. Any, anytime, anytime soon. <laughs> ASMR stream. Yes. Um, yes, I've been accused of that as well. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't. I didn't realize until I was older that uh, that's. Half the reason I liked watching Bob Ross uh, was like, I, you know, I get my own little ASMR thing going on. I'm not like full on, but um, that they you know, definitely get an effect from it. Uh, what size brush was I using? Um, this is, yeah, I forgot to mention this, I think. Um, and the name has rubbed off. This is Rosemary and Company Sable Blend. I might be, I might be wrong. Let me, let me look at a one. Here we go. Here's one that's not terrible. Uh, yes. Yeah. Rosemary and Company Sable Blend. This is the flat three quarter, three quarter inch, uh, which as you can see, I don't use very much, but when I do, it's just what I need. Uh, but this is the line of brushes that you need. Um, they're not cheap, but they're not crazy expensive. And the reason it's a blend is it's because it's um, part synthetic and part natural hair, which is actually my, my favorite combination uh, because it's, you know, the synthetic makes it very durable. They'll last for years as long as you take care of them, don't kill them. Uh, and the natural part of it will absorb water very well, which is, you know, key, at least for me. All right, so I hope that helps. Uh, again, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys had a wonderful time and uh, feel free to check out the rest of my stream. I've got lots of stuff I, you know, going years back. So take a look and thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the week.